And, and you say something very important, if this is a terrorist attack, we just keep saying that in a repeated basis, um, not, not having any notion whatsoever of what's going on, is to be reminded not only of the efficiency of terrorism, but uh, just reminded of the efficiency of terrorism. At it's, this point. Uh, it's ironic, there's a, there's a chilling story uh, Lou Shalero of the FBI, um, who was part of the capture of Ramzi Youssef, who was the mastermind of the World last Trade. bombing of the World Trade Center, told me this story that he was flying over the World Trade Center in a helicopter with the suspect Ramzi Youssef next to him after he was captured in Pakistan. And as they passed over, Lou Shalero uh, nudged him and said to Ramzi Youssef, uh, you see, it's still standing. And Ramzi Yosef smiled and said to the FBI's assistant director, it wouldn't be if I'd had more money. Um, this was... In other words, more money to buy explosives, more money to run a more efficient operation than the one he ran from New Jersey in 93. Exactly. And I mean, we may have seen uh, the second coming of that plan. Uh, John McCrethy is on the phone at the Pentagon. Oh, look, let me just... John McCarthy, we've now heard reports that three planes have been hijacked today. Can you confirm that? Jack McCarthy at the Pentagon. Okay, then let me go quickly to someone named Don Wright, who saw the plane crash into the Pentagon. Don, are you there in Washington? Yes, I am. Can you tell us what happened? Yes, it was about 9.35, and I was looking out our 12th floor windows at 1600 Wilson Boulevard in uh, Roslyn, Virginia, and I watched this. It looked like a commuter plane, two engine, come down from the south, real low, uh, proceed right on and crashed right into the uh, Pentagon. Went directly into the Pentagon? Uh, that is correct. Looked like a deliberate act? A deliberate act, sir. And can you tell me what direction it came from, Don? Came, it came from the south. Came from the south, up along the river, across the land? It came, it came from the south. Okay, and do you, do, did you happen to look at your watch? To, we thought it was just a little bit before 10 o'clock. Well, I was watching ABC News, watching the uh, Twin Tower, uh, and about the, and about the time I saw the plane, I watched it come in very low over the trees, and it just dipped down, came down right over 395, right into the Pentagon. And are you fairly sure that it was what we sometimes describe and recognize as a yes, small commuter plane? Uh, yes, it was. Good, Don. Thank you very much. Appreciate your help. You're Don Wright, welcome. an eyewitness to the crash at the Pentagon. Now, we have had, as I said, reports today. There are hundreds of reports flying around, and so we beg your indulgence on us saying as often as we do, these are reports. They're sometimes unconfirmed. They're sometimes confirmed. We'll try to make it absolutely clear what we absolutely know and what we're uncertain about. But there are now reports around of three aircraft having been hijacked today. So we have at least, because we've now had eyewitnesses to three de apparently deliberate uh, aerial assaults involving the aircraft themselves, two on the Trade Towers in New York City and one on the Pentagon itself, just described by Don Wright as a small two-engine commuter plane which came up from the south. And we now believe that three planes were hijacked, two of them from Boston and one from somewhere else. We are not yet sure uh, precisely what's happened. Um, John, you're listening. Uh, just to uh, clarify for people, John, who's a uh, who's uh, our, one of our leading reporters on crime, uh, knows New York City probably better than anybody in, in many news divisions. Uh, I cannot tell you where that happens. That's either U.S. Uh, uh, Air Force or Navy aircraft, uh, fighter aircraft, uh, now on patrol in what we've described as the no-fly zone uh, over New York City today, lest there be one more attempt. John, go ahead. Uh, they've continued evacuations in the area now. They've, uh, they're evacuating Battery Park City, which is a large apartment complex uh, taking up many blocks across the street from the World Trade Center. And uh, they've evacuated the federal court buildings where the terrorism trials of Ramzi Youssef and others were held. Uh, anything that could be a symbolic target is now being emptied out in New York. New York is, is going into kind of a lockdown mode. I think you'll also see in Washington the same kind of air patrols have been uh, scrambled around uh, principal buildings there. Okay. We have on the phone one of those people who, who uh, makes his living analyzing terrorism. Um, Kyle Olson, do you hear me? Yes, I do. I, I, I wonder if on a day like this anybody wants to be thought of as an expert on terrorism. Um, be that as it may, and assuming that, and knowing that much of the country is shocked at the uh, apparent breadth of this, are you? 
Well, you know, this is a, this is the the kind of thing that uh, that has fallen more into Tom Clancy novels than into uh, into actual response planning. Um, having said that, we've been anticipating for a long time. We've wondered why it's been so relatively quiet. Uh, the, act, the suggestions of Osama bin Laden's involvement. What has he been doing since coal? Uh, other other groups out there with uh, with a, a real or imagined grudge against the United States. Uh, the nature of the event is shocking. The uh, the fact that it's happened is not. Thank you very much, Carl. Really appreciate it, Carl Olson. Yeah, one, uh, one quick thing. Yeah, go ahead. One quick thing. The, accus the suggestions that are floating around out there right now, there's apparently this claim from the, uh, from the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Right. Um, very interesting to yes, know. If, if, this is, if this is legitimate, if this, is, if this claim stands up, this appears to be okay. the first time this group has targeted Americans. This group has primarily steered away from the more extreme end of the, of the violence scale. They focused less on suicide bombings more on uh, more on on gun attacks and and that sort of thing in the territories against Israelis. Well, if, if it, this holds it, up, this is a different this is a very different tactic. Well, it. if it is true, and of course the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine was very much involved in attacking aircraft in the 1970s, which carried Americans. So certainly, would accept your notion that it's a recent attack on on Americans. Thank you, Kyle, very much. You bet. Um, uh, as as Mr. Olson makes clear, there has been at least one claim. And those of us who cover this for a very long period of time are always suspicious of claims. Uh, people who cover international terrorism. I'm going to interrupt myself. Linda Douglas, our Capitol Hill correspondent, I think is on the phone. And if she's not, she already reports there has been an explosion of some kind at the Capitol. Is Linda Douglas on the telephone? Uh, let's get her on the phone as quickly as we have. She just reported a couple of minutes ago that the leaders of the Congress uh, Senator Lott, Senator Daschle, the Republican and Democratic leaders uh, in the Senate had been taken to some un or have been taken to some undisclosed secure location. Um, our general assumption is that there's no panic involved in this, that somebody in the Capitol building, as someone in the Washington, in the White House, has a book which says that when these things happen, here Thomas, maybe you can confirm this for me, when these, these things happen, there are certain modalities which you behave and as you see the hierarchy of the American political establishment and the military establishment being attacked, you want to protect the chain of command. Absolutely. The first thing they try to do is get everyone in secure positions so they can gather information and um, make decisions about what to do next. Uh, one of the things that law enforcement officials had been planning for is the notion of a multi-tiered attack. Uh, an attack occurring in multiple places simultaneously because one of the things they've talked about is that terrorists want to project more fear as much fear as possible and one of the ways you can do it is to have this notion that attacks are happening on multiple fronts yeah well and, and there, we've never seen anything like this before in the united states of course and, and in fact not seen anything like this in my record i've been doing this for 30 some odd years i don't recall any multitude of attack we had two or three we've had two suicide bombers within a in a short period of time in the Middle East. Uh, we had the two embassies uh, in Africa, uh, in Kenya and in Tanzania, the attack two summers ago in the United States. But the notion that uh, the terrorists, either an organization or organizations, plural, uh, should be able to mount a concerted effort against the United States in this way, causing in this instance so many casualties, in the, in the instance of the Trade Tower, certainly so many casualties, is, is going to astound people in the political and military and, and intelligence establishment. Absolutely. The notion that you could have multiple attacks like this, they have been planning for it, they had not seen it. Um, this is an extraordinary escalation, one that they were, they were predicting would happen, but no one would think that it would happen this quickly. Okay. John Miller? I think... Uh, Let me just interrupt. I sure. apologize again. We're now looking at a, a helicopter over the Pentagon. That makes perfect sense this morning. But given the fact that we're all sensitive to the presence of any aircraft, uh, that was a helicopter that just flew across the screen. That is, and as we had one, at least one eyewitness said this was an attack on the Pentagon from the south. He described it quite confidently as resembling a commuter aircraft, which is to say smaller than a small private aircraft and not as large as a commercial jet. It may have been a, a prop jet. Um, it may have been a jet, but it's a smaller version of the jets which so many people in so many middle-sized American cities are now accustomed to seeing. In terms of the realm of terrorism, this is going to be a real uh, first test, uh, literally by fire, for the Bush administration. You recall, after the embassy bombings in East Africa, uh, the Clinton administration uh, waited about 10 days 
and launched a missile attack against the camps of Osama bin Laden, who they felt confident at that time they could say was responsible for it and who's since been charged in it. Uh, in this case, I think this ratchets up. Uh, Excuse me. This is the Pentagon we're looking at now, according to my, uh, according to my monitor. And again, it is hard to, to grasp what part of the building. We do not know if they're in the courtyard or outside, but you can see that a fairly considerable amount of damage has been done. We do not know whether these are offices or storage areas. The Pentagon is full of uh, many thousands of people uh, every day. The Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, has been saying only yesterday and today that he wants to reduce the... Uh, the bloatedness, as he put it, as he alluded to it in the military and the bureaucracy. But this is the great home of the of the military.